Welcome to another video from my now closed YouTube channel. Today I would like to talk about the TDA 7293 and before you turn off you're going to like this. I'm going to give you the full circuit diagram, show you some modifications that will improve its sound and performance. Looking at the circuit diagram you will see you might think this is a preamp or a pre-drive circuit of some sort but it isn't and if I tell you it has for all intents and purposes zero effect to the actual sound of the amplifier. When I first got this board long before we had the circuit diagram I, I looked up the IC and noticed that it wasn't an audio IC at all. I was a little disappointed thinking, well, why are they using an instrument IC in an audio circuit? But the truth is, the audio doesn't go anywhere near that IC. That really doesn't. I found that out sort of by accident, by, check, by swapping out the IC for a number of other ones which would be better in an audio circuit. And of course I couldn't detect any difference at all. Um, which is hardly surprising when it's not in the audio circuit. Now if you look at the circuit diagram you can see there's a section in a dotted line. That circuit what it basically does, it brings the offset, any DC offset, down to effectively, for all intents and purposes, zero. Because as you've noticed on the circuit, there are no preset pots, there's nothing to adjust the center point, uh, there's nothing to adjust quiescent current, and there's nothing to adjust offset. The TL Four, three, one. Now this is actually a shunt regulator. You have to be careful saying that. And it, it basically brings down your, your normal operating voltage between 35 and 40 volts down to a nominal 15 volts. Looking at the two ICs that are in this circuit, one of them is, is, is called the master and that receives its dry from the buffer driver pin 11. So although the ICs are for all intents and purposes in parallel they're not they're not literally connected lit one on top of the other so to speak. Let's have a quick look now at some things you can do to this board to make it that little bit better but I have to say out of the box it works perfectly. But there's a few things that you can do which make sense to do, quite honestly. The first one is C1. Now, as supplied, that's a 2200 picofarad capacitor. And that is unnecessarily and detrimentally flawed in this circuit. It actually makes the HF roll off. What you need to do is to remove that capacitor and replace it with a 47 picofarad. Now this also has the, uh, the effect, as you can imagine, of extending the high frequency uh, uh, response of the amplifier. And it doesn't seem to have any, it doesn't make it go unstable or ring or do anything horrible at all. So. 2200 is rather high and it would make connecting some pieces of equipment to it lead to a, 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 um, a poor HF response. So take that out and replace it with a 47 picofarad capacitor. Now the other thing that is surprising, the bootstrap capacitor, which is C12, on the circuit diagram suggests or is fitted a 22 microfarad. If you actually look at the application notes of the um, 
72.93, it does say if you have two chips, that capacitor needs to be doubled. So this is actually fitted with the wrong value capacitor. It should be a 40, well, the nearest preferred value would be 47 microfarad and 63 volt working or you could get away with 50 or something like that but 47 at 63 is a good commonly available value now ironically i mentioned in one of the earlier videos that this capacitor from from as supplied on the board sticks up vertically and is almost touching the heat sink which is bad you just do not want a capacitor so close to the heat sink that's basically a design flaw someone that made this pcb hadn't thought so as you're going to change that capacitor anyway lie it down on the board facing away from the heat sink which will prolong its life and purchase a high temperature 105 degree and now just a couple of notes from comments that people have made i think i neglected to mention in the previous videos on this subject the quiescent current now as i've mentioned before there are no adjustments on it and i've not found any issues at all it actually consumes 80 milliamps and that's fairly consistent even if you run it at lower voltages it does the quiescent current does go up and it's largely because there's more current being shunted through those shunt regulators um, but with 38 volts on it which is what mine has got it actually consumes 82 milliamps initially that might sound quite a lot but when you consider that there are two chips on each amplifier each mono board and each one has its own quiescent current so to speak so if there was only one chip it would only be consuming 40 milliamps so it's it's not each chip is consuming more it's the fact that you are literally doubling the quiescent current that doesn't mean when you start driving it the current consumption rises because when you start driving the load through the loudspeaker, excuse me, the current is shared equally between the two chips. And I mean, that's overall the point in using the dual ICs to start with. The amplifier circuit itself is more or less textbook. It's got the usual Zobel network and the stability components comprising of um, resistor 6 and C5. It's more or less textbook. The thing that differenti differentiates it between that and the way it's presented in most of the circuits in AliExpress and eBay is purely the auto null circuit. I've not found in all honesty that the DC offset is that high anyway, even on ones that don't use that but it's a low cost chip and it's a good and clever circuit to keep the offset because logically you would want zero offset. I mean, any offset is not good, but normally you'd reckon below 50 millivolts is classed as sort of acceptable. So, but if you can get it down to one or two millivolts, why would you not do that? And this circuit does just that. Another question that keeps cropping up, up is where can you get this board? And I'll put the link in there where you can buy these. And just to make a point that I received no commission from these, these just happen to be the only company that I've found. Just before we wind up, I'd like to thank Ron, who has spent a lot of time reverse engineering this for everybody including myself and has spent quite a lot of time building and doing tests on this particular board so thanks very much Ron 
on behalf of everybody, much appreciated. The next video to come will be a preamp that's designed, well it's more of a buffer amplifier, which is designed to alleviate high frequency response drifting if you should add a volume potentiometer to the input. So watch out for that and health permitting it won't be too long. Thank you for watching.